Hey Guru Nation, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Really, really, really does mean a lot to me. Look, I'm going to go back to the fundamentals on my channel. So if you're brand new and you just started and you say, oh my gosh, this guy has like 10,000 videos. I don't know where to start. Don't worry. Just subscribe and get notified of my uploads. We're going back to the fundamentals. Like the next year, I'm just dedicated to the fundamentals because... People think that they can become CRAs out of nowhere. People think that CRA is an entry-level job. And let me tell you, it's not. And let me tell you why. First of all, you don't know what you don't know. And let me tell you, if you're brand new, you don't know a lot. You think you know what a CRA does because maybe one of your friends does it and you think all they do is travel and fly and occasionally fly business class and they're always posting the highlight reels on their social networks. That's not how it is, guys. It's you, the CRA, is the last line of defense between the site and the FDA. So if the site is doing what they need to be doing and they're following protocol and they're following good clinical practice and they're adhering to patient safety, Everything's fine for a CRA, but how do you ensure that they are? How do you actually ensure and guarantee that the site is doing all those things? Enter a CRA. So you are literally responsible for patient safety indirectly. You don't have any involvement with patients, but indirectly you are responsible for patient safety because let me tell you something. Sites are extremely overworked. Coordinators, bless their hearts, all of them, I'm one myself, get super busy. We overlook things. Principal investigators, most of them are amazing. They rely on their coordinators because they have private practice most of the time and they're in clinics and they're doing things besides research. So they rely on their coordinators. The industry is super busy. The industry is short-staffed. Coordinators are given more than they can handle, and mistakes are made, and that's for the good ones. Imagine for the bad ones. So this is why we need CRAs, but there's a couple of levels to this. Number one, if the CRA doesn't know what that coordinator actually should be doing, how are they going to monitor properly? How would you know as a CRA that the coordinator is doing what they need to be doing? And you can say, well, Dan, it's not that hard to learn a protocol. I'll read the protocol and make sure. That's a great first step. But how do you know GCP? How do you make sure the patients are being adhered to? Everything could be fine on the study, but one exception can be detrimental to the study. One deviation can throw a wrench in the study. And how do you even know what a deviation is in the context of a protocol and in the context of GCP? And how do you know which of those deviations are extremely detrimental to the study versus those deviations that inevitably occur that are unavoidable and that are not that serious? How do you know these things if you've never worked in research? The answer is you don't. There's a difference between theory and hands dirty actually doing something. This is why I really think the best CRAs were once CRCs. If, if not that, at least the CRAs were once in-house CRAs, remote site monitors, study startup specialist, trial master file specialist, even data manager assistant, even project manager assistant, just something, preferably at the site level, but we will accept the CRO level as well. Because otherwise, there's no way you can jump in and pay attention to patient safety. And let me tell you, let me like harp on this. For those of you guys and gals out there lying on your resumes to get CRA roles, you're directly putting patient safety at risk directly. I know you don't directly as a CRA interact with patients or actually do anything with patients, but how do you prevent errors at the site from occurring? The really good CRAs can see an error, a critical deviation, before it ever happens. 
and they can see it by looking at the site processes and looking at the little things like they may be not even red flags but they may be like little hints here and there that potential danger is lurking how is the site's documentation are they documenting as per alcoa attributable legible contemporaneous original accurate complete do you even know what that is then how do you know that the site's doing that if you do know what that is because i just said it do you know how it works in the context of a study visit these are the things you've got to understand to be a cra so yes the money's there yes the travel is appealing let me tell you it's only appealing for a little bit and then it's not appealing anymore uh, there's a lot of good we need more cra's they are fairly i think cra's are undercompensated for the work that they do but don't cut corners don't skip steps don't just bypass all the precursor steps to be a cra because somebody can get you in or you think you can learn on the job if the sponsor or cro knowingly hires you as research naive then it's they they know what they're getting and it's their responsibility to train you but if you're if you're fudging your resume and you're figuring out ways like to game the system and you find yourself in a cra role when you have no business being there you're putting patient safety at risk you're gonna get caught eventually the site is gonna eventually figure out hey how is this person a cra how did they not even catch this how even the good CRAs miss stuff because they're overworked. So CRA is not an entry level role. You have to know the nuances. It's not just theories that you can learn from a book. It's details. It's context within the study visits. It's nuances. You have to know how all the systems work together from site SOPs to protocol to GCP to study specific nuances that every protocol has to patient enrollment, patient retention. You have to know these things to PI oversight. How do you know that the PI is doing what a PI is supposed to be doing? How do you know that they're fulfilling their obligations to the FDA and to their patients? If you've never worked in research, it's impossible to know. Oh, well, I read about it in your book, Dan. Your book was great and your five-hour video was great. Thank you. I appreciate it. I agree. But the nuances, the details, there's no way I could have written a book or made a video with this much detail to cover every study ever designed or every study ever designed in the future and what a CRA needs to do to look out for problems. Proactively stop problems before they become big problems. That's what CRAs do. And you have to master the fundamentals. And if you haven't, my book and the five-hour video is a great way to start, but nothing beats hands-on experience. This is why we have the CRA Academy. This is why we have the CRC Academy. We have real internships. Even those just, just scratches the surface. It's my own product. We have real studies that you intern on. It just begins to scratch the surface. The more you get your hands dirty, the better prepared you're going to be to be a CRA. The Maybe the one exception to this rule is a BSN RN, so registered nurses. But even then, you at least know the therapeutic areas and the con meds well enough to keep the patient safe from like something very bad happening patient safety wise. You know what meds are prohibited. You know how they should be washed off of certain things. You, you can look for efficacy assessments because you're an RN. You know these things. You still don't understand, though, GCP. You still don't understand site operating, standard operating procedures at the site CRO sponsor level and how all these things, this is where it gets tricky, how all these things interact with each other in a practical real-world setting. So CRA is not an entry-level role. It is possible if you're an RN, BSN, but you, need, you still need to be trained on the job before you're let loose to be your own like standalone CRA that you can handle a monitoring visit on your own. 
Not to mention the fact that it's actually stressful. Like, I need to emphasize that as well. So imagine how stressful it is as is when you know what you're doing. Now compound that times 10 when you don't know what you're doing. So if this video can keep someone from trying to game the system by becoming a CRA before they have their experience elsewhere, I hope it at least stops one person from doing that and reconsidering. And yeah, you can do it the right way. Get another role before CRA. Master some facets of your skill set and then move on to being a CRA. Like, subscribe, comment, share, Guru Nation. It's time to go back to the fundamentals. Take care.